Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of today's Lightroom tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how to create your very own tropical Lightroom presets. So if you love that tropical vibe and you wanna figure out how to create your own Lightroom presets, today is for you. Whether you're using Lightroom CC, Lightroom CC Classic, or Lightroom Mobile, I'm gonna show you how. Let's hit that intro and get into it. All right, so the tropical preset we're gonna be kind of emulating today is found in our Baja Breeze pack. Just gonna show you exactly the sort of look we're going for. If you wanna just download one of these for free, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. You can check that out. The difference with these presets and what we're going to create today is that these actually have custom Lightroom profiles. So you can actually adjust the amount of the preset with this slider up top, which is pretty handy. But if you don't need that, you just wanna know how to make the preset, well, let's talk about that. First things first, you're gonna need a practice image. This one is downloaded from Pexels by Mr. Mo Shamut. Thank you, Mo, for this awesome image. You can grab that, or you can head to signatureedits.com and grab some free raw files to practice on too. I just wanna say one thing, when it comes to actually creating a specific look in Lightroom, you need to make sure you're starting with an image that kinda of has the same vibe as the look you're going for. For example, if I had a photo here of a goat on the African Sahara, that would be very hard to make it look like a tropical photo, because it's not, right? It's kinda of like trying to bake a cake, you have the wrong ingredients, not gonna happen. So make sure the photo you're starting with is it has great light, it has the right colors, that's gonna go a long way in getting the style you want. I remember when I was first starting out in Lightroom, it was so frustrating because I was trying to recreate these looks and the tutorials and the presets I downloaded just didn't work. And the problem actually wasn't with the tutorials or with the presets, it was the fact that I just wasn't using uh, photos that were kind of right to begin with. So no matter what I did, they weren't going to look right. Okay, enough on that, let's talk about this preset. First things first, let's take a look at what the preset looks like, check out the colors, see what we're gonna have to try to emulate. And you can learn so much just from looking at presets up close or at photos that you like and sort of evaluating, okay, what's going on in the colors here? If I look at an unedited photo, and then I look at the edited one, you can see that we've really desaturated everything. So all of the oranges, all of the greens have kind of been desaturated and replaced with this really nice kind of aqua marine tone. Again, you can look at the black point and the white point in the image. So the darkest spot, which is probably right around here, and the brightest spot, and see what the darkest spot actually looks like. So our unedited image, you're gonna see the darkest spot is kinda of like pure black. But with the preset, things get a lot lighter and we've added this really nice aqua tone, really dark aqua to our blacks. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to recreate that later on when we're working in our tone curve. Now, if I zoom in on the lightest part of the photo, which is probably this shirt, you can see originally it's almost pure white. Afterwards, we've made it more of a really bright gray and we've kind of added maybe a little bit of a bluish green tone to that gray. So we're gonna to wanna to recreate that as well. So we're desaturating everything except for our oranges and this nice teal color. And we're going to make sure that we kind of grab the contrast, take it down, make sure that the blackest part of our image is a dark aqua and the brightest part is kind of a greenish bright gray. And we should be a long ways into creating this sort of look. So let's reset this and start from scratch. I'm gonna explain how I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But remember, there's no perfect recipe to creating your own preset. So these are gonna be principles that explain why to do these things. They're not necessarily hard and fast rules where you have to copy it at exactly minus 30 and set the highlights to exactly 43, right? So let's go through here. What I'm gonna start by doing is just sort of getting rid of some of the overall contrast in the image by taking our whites down, our blacks up a little bit, maybe brighten things just a little, something like that. And I'm gonna add some clarity to the image. Now that's just going to make things pop and clarity works by actually making the bright parts of your image brighter and the dark parts darker. Kind of like contrast, but it's doing it with the lines in your image. So if I zoom in way, way in here, 1600% on say this little bush. So we've got the bright parts of these branches, the dark parts of these shadows and kind of the medium parts of these greens. Now clarity is going to take all of that and just enhance the contrast between them. So you're gonna see, as I take the clarity slider up, the dark parts get darker, the light parts get lighter. And that's what's actually going on here. Now sharpening does the same thing. If we go to our detail section, we grab the amount, it's gonna do kind of the same thing, only on a much finer scale. So that's the real difference. And you can actually adjust the fineness of that scale by taking our radius up. And now it's going to act a lot more like clarity is going to act. So you can see sharpening and clarity, very similar tools, and they can both be used stylistically, not just for actually adding sharpness to your image. So we can grab our clarity, take it up. It's gonna add some pop to the image overall. And that's actually an important part of this look. 
Now, let's go and work on the colors. We're gonna head to our HSL panel. And the first thing I'm gonna do is desaturate pretty much everything except for the kind of aqua marine and the oranges of our skin tones. So we're gonna grab all of these various colors, take the saturation way down. And you're gonna see that already we've come a long way towards this look. Now, <laughs> obviously it's not the same thing, but we're getting closer than before where we had all of these greens, all of these yellows, we've gotten rid of them. We've kind of made things a little bit um, just more focused in terms of color. And that's one thing that I think photographers, you can gain the very most and improve your editing, improve your photography the most by focusing on, okay, how much clutter do I have in this photo, both in terms of my composition and my overall exposure values and my actual colors. So once we take the saturation out of all the colors, except for just a couple, so in this case, the oranges and the aquas, everything about the photo gets a lot more focused because our eye knows exactly where to look, which is this little pop of color right here. Things are just more, co more cohesive. They blend together. So that's what's going on here and the reasoning behind it. We can do the same thing with the luminance, adjusting the exposure values of our various colors by grabbing our yellows and our greens, pulling them down. Something like that. Before, after, so we've darkened things down. We've made the brightest part of our image our subject, so our eye is naturally drawn here, both in the composition and in the color and in the exposure. All right, now lastly, we're gonna take our hue and we're gonna shift our yellows more towards green. That's gonna kinda add the aqua we had happening here in the bushes when we looked earlier. We're gonna take our greens, shift them more towards aqua. The aquas we're gonna leave alone. And the blues, we can shift them maybe a little bit towards aqua as well. Something like that. Okay, so we've done quite a bit with just the HSL panel. Now we're gonna kind of finesse that a little bit more by heading to our calibration. Now, if you are using Lightroom CC and not Lightroom CC Classic, or you're using Lightroom Mobile, you won't have this panel unless they've added it since I did this tutorial. But it's only gonna be some subtle changes, so you don't need to worry about it too much. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my reds, I'm gonna shift them more towards green. And the reason I'm doing that is because now I'm gonna grab our blues and shift them more towards aqua, which is naturally going to affect the skin tones and make them more red. So we're kind of counterbalancing those two things. And if you're not familiar with the camera calibration tool, you wanna to know exactly what's going on, how to use it, make sure you check out my calibration video because that goes in depth about what it's for, how to use it, that kind of thing. We're gonna desaturate our blues a little bit here. Desaturate our greens because we definitely don't need that green to be saturated. I'm gonna add some saturation back in to our reds, maybe add a little bit more in the blues. I went too far. So this is all a process of just experimenting, having fun, figuring it out for yourself. That's what I'd encourage you to do. Don't focus on just getting the exact perfect settings or copying me. Figure out what works for yourself and you're really gonna learn a lot just by testing and experimenting and making mistakes. Okay, so, so far we've come from here to here. We've made some good process, pro progress <laughs> towards actually getting the look we're going for. Next off, we're gonna focus on that black point and the white point by going to our tone curve. Remember, we wanted to add some kind of dark teal aqua to our blues, or sorry, to our blacks, and we wanna make our white point a little bit less bright. So we're gonna do that by grabbing our white point, which is this corner up here, and dragging it down. So you can see when I do that, I'm taking the brightest part of my image and I'm saying, I want the brightest part of my image to be gray, or black, or really, really bright gray. Same thing over here, this is the black point. I can take that and make it really bright, or I can make it all the way black, it's up to me. So I'm just gonna take that and raise it a little bit. So all I've done here is make my blacks a little bit brighter and my whites a little bit less bright. That's all that's happened so far. Now we're gonna focus on actually adding that kind of teal color to our black point over here. We're gonna do that with these individual color channels. So you can see since Lightroom updated, they've added this kind of color overlay to the tone curve, which helps us know what's gonna happen when we grab our shadows, for example, and take it this way. It's going to take reds out of the shadows, which is gonna make the shadows more kind of teal. So we're just gonna grab that bring it back to around, say there. Now the only thing is that we've not only taken teal out of the shadows, we've taken it all the way out, all the way up to the highlights. So we're gonna grab another dot here, just click once, and make sure that that dot is kind of centered on this line. See this black line here? That's just the neutral point. So we're gonna take everything else except for the darkest point of the image and make it normal. Something like that. All right, so here's before, here's after. So we flatten things, add a little bit of kind of dark teal to the shadows and the highlights. I think we're doing okay here. Here's before, 
years after. So we've just made them a little bit more of a gray rather than a pure white. We could maybe add a little bit of green and red to the whites and just make them more yellow. We could also do that by just taking blue out of the highlights. So we're going to grab this slider, just show you. So by doing that, I'm taking blue out of the highlights, which is going to leave us with a mixture of green and red, which is yellow. So if you want to understand more of this, it's kind of getting confusing. Don't worry about it too much. You know, at first it just takes experimenting to get the hang of, but you can also watch my tone curve video elsewhere on the YouTube channel, and that'll really help you understand this a little bit better. So I've made my highlights a little bit warmer by doing that. I'm going to dial it back so it's very subtle before, after. Okay, so that's what our tone curve has done. Now we can add a little bit more color to our overall image by going to our color grading section. Depending what version of Lightroom you're using, if you're on an older version, yours might say split toning. It's kind of the same thing. You can watch my split toning video or you can watch my color grading video if you want more of an in-depth explanation. But essentially, we're going to go to our shadows. We're going to add some teal to them, say around there. Okay, our mid-tones, well, maybe we'll adjust them a little bit. I don't know, depends what you're feeling. There's no one size fits all here. It depends what looks good to you and how your particular image is interacting with your settings. And then I'm gonna make my highlights, mm, I don't know, I might even leave the highlights. That looks fine. Here's before, here's after. We just added some color, particularly to the shadows. And we're looking good. So let's make this a little bigger, before and after. So we've kind of got that look happening. Now, because it's tropical, it's summer, I want it to feel a little bit more bright and airy. So we're going to go to our HSL, go to the luminance section, and actually maybe make our yellows and our greens maybe a little brighter. I might have gone too far earlier by taking them down. And it's all a process, right? You dial things in little by little, and once you get the look you like, well, then you can test it on some other images and see how you're doing. So here's before, here's after. I think that's looking pretty darn good. I'm going to test it on a few other photos. So. This photo right now, I can see we've lost a lot of our saturation on this turtle, and I kind of don't like it. So I'm going to refine it a little by adding some more saturation maybe to the oranges. Take the luminance down in the oranges slightly. That's looking a little bit better. Here's before, here's after. Obviously, depends on the vibe you're looking for, and you could adjust that individually for each photo. But I'm kind of going for a blanket look that looks good to me. Now, this photo, I do not like the way that the oranges are kind of changing to more of a sickly green. So we're going to grab our yellows and maybe shift those back a little bit, somewhere like that. I think that's going to look better overall. And we could grab our saturation, take that down in the yellows a little bit more. See what's happening here. Use this little tool to tell exactly what color this is. Okay, so it's working with the oranges, it's saying. So I'm going to go down in my calibration. I'm going to shift my reds over a little bit because that's where that was coming from. That's feeling better. Okay. Now, obviously, it's not going to work perfectly on every photo, but you kind of mix and match. Try it on as many photos as you can, as many different lighting conditions as you can, and get something that you're happy with. That's kind of the process of creating your own presets. And, of course, your exposure, your white balance, they're all going to make a big difference, so try playing with that. Right? Before, after. Okay. I'm kind of feeling it. It's looking pretty good. So if you're happy with the way it's looking, you can go over to your presets, go up to this little plus icon, go create preset, call it Ryan's tropical preset or whatever your name is, of course, or you can use Ryan. That's cool. You want to be me? That's, that's fine. Some days I don't want to, so <laughs> we can trade, put it in whatever group you want and then hit create. And then you have that preset ready to go and to apply to all of your photos. So if this has been helpful, do me a favor. Can you hit the like button and leave a comment below? Just let me know, yes, no, maybe, or request for future tutorials, future editing styles. I really want to create content that's helpful, but unless you tell me, I don't necessarily know what it is that you want to know. So please, please share. And I will see you in the next video. Unless you have some other question for me, leave it below and I'll try and get back to you. All right, go create something awesome. Hope this was helpful. See you in the next video. Peace.